Hello and welcome to the ISC West Media Studio. Uh, I'm Whit Richardson, the Managing Editor of Security Director News, and I'm joined by Steve Van Til. He's the CEO of Brevo and the Chairman of SIA's Standards Committee. Uh, so Steve, about uh, thank you for joining me first. Welcome, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, about a year ago, you, you took over as Chairman of the Standards Committee, and I know that when uh, you, you took that seat, you, you had some, some goals you set for yourself. Uh, tell me about Tell me about those. Sure. My uh, original goal in uh, running the Standards Committee was to produce something that was demonstrable within the first year that we had kind of reconstituted all of the subcommittees and gotten new volunteers to work with us. And I'm really happy to see that uh, on the ISC West show floor right now, the SIA booth has a dedicated area that is set up to explain our standards mission and actually demonstrate equipment that's operating according to one of the projects that we've got running in the Access Control and Identity Subcommittee. So it's been very gratifying to see not only how quickly the CS staff were able to pull together the um, display and, and demo that we've got here on the floor show, but also to see how quickly the member companies were able to collaborate and work on putting together the framework for a new standard. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is new for the for, uh, for SIA, their booth there, to have uh, standards have a presence at the booth and be... Yeah, the, uh, the booth presence is very new and one of the things that uh, was a real driver is that we can demonstrate equipment with blinking lights and things actually working. The specific demonstration that we're conducting right now is a new protocol that connects readers to control panels and it goes by the name of OSDP. And that was proposed as a standardization project inside of the Access and Identity Subcommittee about eight or nine months ago. Right now, the specification is still under review, but the equipment that's being shown from four different manufacturers in the booth is actually working according to an earlier draft version of the specification that all of them collaborated on putting together for the show. So it's really exciting to be able to see this happening. Uh, I think a lot of times the standards activities come off as uh, a lot of paper pushing and a lot of very dry uh, bits and bytes type of stuff, but there's actually an opportunity for people to go over there to the booth, see what's going on, and throughout the day, both today and tomorrow and Friday, there are some short uh, 10 or 15 minute narrated lectures that explain what's going on with the equipment and allow people to ask some questions. So the schedule for those, I don't have it memorized, but it is up on the show website and people can go ahead and look at the times uh, for that demonstration. Okay. So it's nice to have something concrete, like you said, uh, the standards. It stuff is. Sometimes people just think, you know, paper pushing, but it's well, nice to have something concrete to to show and, and have people can we, We've also pushed a little bit of paper. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I do like to talk about, uh, the guiding document for the CIA Standards Organization is something called our roadmap. And there was an older roadmap that was drafted in 2007. It was about 30 pages long. Uh, it was very technical. And uh, several people, executives from member companies, told me that they'd started to read it because they're very interested in, and think that uh, standards are important for their companies, but they started dozing off within the first four pages. So I kind of took that as a clue that this is a document that needed to be written in a much clearer way for business executives because the key to standards is participation of member companies. The key to getting member companies to donate engineering time or product management time to actually work outside the company on a standards project is for the executives in those companies to understand the business value for them to participate early, to influence standards and that sort of thing. So the new roadmap, we call it Roadmap 2.0, uh, can be downloaded from the uh, SIAonline.org website. Uh, there's a link right on the main page for standards and you'll see that the roadmap is one of the first documents that, that's linked there. Uh, in contrast to the old one, this one's only about eight pages long. Uh, it's written for the business reader, not the technical reader. And so when I get questions about what is CS Standards doing, the first thing I always do is refer people to this particular document because I think it's very accessible. You can read it in about 10 minutes and it'll tell you what the goals of the organization are, how we see our roles in the industry, and how people can participate. Okay. Uh, what else uh, is that? What is there to look forward to? What is the, the Standards Committee uh, looking at now? What are the you know, the goals for the next year? We've got a couple of things. Uh, one of the changes uh, that we instituted in standards is um, not just being an author, but also being an educator. 
uh, harmonizing with some of the other standards organizations, uh, providing a forum for people to talk about standards, and then also um, being uh, a collaborator on standards that may have been uh, out there as proprietary instruments, but people would kind of like to uh, bring into the fold, so to speak, and OSDP is actually a great example of that. The other area that we're seeing more uh, push toward is what's called um, application standards, so not just uh, interfaces between equipment, but how to actually assemble a system, because we found that a lot of end users spend a lot of time uh, essentially recreating the same kind of specification for how to do a particular security function, mm -hmm. meaning something that involves multiple components and software systems. So application standards essentially put a framework together for how to assemble an effective solution out of all the different components that might be out there. Um, the other thing that we're seeing that largely gets ignored in a lot of the bits and bytes standards is what we would call quality standards. So for example, our digital video subcommittee is working on quality standards that give uh, essentially um, subjective descriptions of objective quantities like resolution and frame rate and lighting and things like that uh -huh. and cast that in a way that allows people to say, I want video of this quality or that quality or the next quality as suited to the needs of my application and budget. So quality standards and application standards are two of the areas that we're doing in addition to sort of the traditional bits and bytes and protocol. Okay. Are there any uh, particular challenges that you've identified or hurdles that are still you know, out there that you're... Participation is always the number one challenge. Um, everybody's always very busy. Yeah. Um, the payoff for standards is usually in the longer term for your company. It's not sure. something that's going to make a difference this quarter or maybe even this year. It does make a difference in the long run because being involved early and influencing the outcome of standards obviously is your opportunity to shape things in a way that makes sense for you, for the unique use, uh, end user needs that you represent, and for your company. Right. So, it's a spade. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Is there My anything pleasure. else to add? No, I think that does it. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me. You're welcome. My pleasure.